Hey guys, it's me, Kim. How are you doing? I'm great, thank you so much for asking. I feel like I have my Fire Engine Red 50s lip on right now, and that is appropriate because I'm gonna talk about the help even though the help is set in the early 60s. Anyways, so on my last video, I talked about all of my issues with Green Book, and boy, do I have a lot of issues with Green Book. And somebody sent me an email asking about Octavia Spencer, and the fact that she seems to be involved with a lot of these kind of movies, you know? She's in the, she's in a lot of the Hey Maid. <laughs> hey Maid. Hey Maid. I say you got on your may I feel like you always do. Movies. Um, and I could not send them back a thoughtful or interesting reply because I haven't seen The Help. I know. So The Help came out back in 2011 and for the past seven or eight years I've just been avoiding it. But I realized, oh, and you'll say, how have you been avoiding it? You made a, a joke about the help in your last video. Because I'm really good at that. <laughs> I can pick up all of the jokes and all of, you know, the memes and stuff. But I haven't seen it. I have not sat down and watched the movie. I've been avoiding it. But I recognized that as a cultural critic and as an analyst, I can't keep going without seeing the help because that movie has now become kind of a shorthand for white savior films in general. I mean, that is like the contemporary exemplar of the white savior movie. So I have to watch it if I'm really gonna, you know, be talking to y'all thoughtfully about this stuff. Of course, in typical Kim fashion, I watched it. I read up on the author, really did a lot of research on the author, and read lots of critiques of that film. So The Help came out as a movie in 2011, but before it was a movie, it was a hugely successful book. I mean, this book sold over 5 million copies. I don't know if y'all understand, but that's like thriller, okay? That's the thriller of books. 5 million books? That's crazy, that's crazy. And also, that five million number is from an article from like 2012. The Help could have sold like eight million books by now. That's nuts. What's even crazier is, I had never even heard of this book until the movie came out. I mean, this is a book that was on the New York Times bestseller list for a year. I had never heard of it. Two Americas. There are two Americas. And I also think that that says something about the target demo of this book. I was in college at this time, but still, still, how did it not get on my radar at all, right? Because it's not for me. I'm not the target demo. I watched the movie. It's a two and a half hour film with so many famous actresses. The amazing Viola Davis, Octavia Spencer, Allison Janney, Emma Stone, is that her name? Bryce Dallas Howard, Sissy Spacek, like all of these people that we know, like famous actresses, and I didn't hate it. I didn't hate the movie, like much to my surprise, I didn't hate it. I actually enjoyed it. And I understand why people would like it. And I understand why so many black people that I know liked it. On first watch, I did really like it. But once I scratched that surface a little bit, once I did some digging and some reading and some research and did some my real good analysis, that's when I noticed that there are huge issues with this film, like colossal issues. Let's get into what made me like the film initially. I love the South. I love the South. I don't want to live outside of the South. I don't plan on doing that unless I'm unlucky enough to marry somebody who has to live outside of the South. I'm not. And I love Jackson, Mississippi. Like, love that freaking city, I would move there. Absolutely, I would move there, no hesitation. So those beautiful sweeping shots of Jackson were right up my alley, right up my alley, totally for me. And speaking of those shots, the look of the film was just beautiful. The houses were beautiful, the cinematography was beautiful, the bright, vibrant colors and the settings were beautiful, the costumes were beautiful. I like that. I really like aesthetics. I also like that this is a story about domestic workers. I think we need more stories about domestics, not fewer. I love that Roma was made and widely celebrated. You know, if you are from where I'm from, then you have some domestic workers 
in your family, in your family tree. I cringe when I see people say, I don't want to see that and black people are, and I'm like, but that is actually a part of our history and that history deserves to be celebrated. Don't embarrass your ancestors or your foremothers by acting embarrassed of them. Like, ew, that's really icky to me. Black domestic workers are so central to so much civil rights work. Domestics are the group of women who brought down Montgomery during the Montgomery bus boycott like they're the unsung heroes in a lot of ways of black history black American history and black culture and so I just am never in favor of trying to minimize that I think more stories about that I liked that this movie was more or less honest about white women's role in racial terror I liked that the white women except for one in this movie were nasty, they were mean, they were negligent to their children, they were incompetent, they were selfish, they were spoiled. I like that. In 2019, every woke white woman thinks that she would be Viola Liuzzo, but no, you probably wouldn't, okay? You're probably not taking a bullet for the cause you'd probably be Miss Hilly. And like, let's be honest about that. And I love that in comparison to the white women, it was the black women who were competent and caring and thoughtful and eloquent and witty. Oh, and obviously they're the bravest people in this film. I like that we saw Abilene and Minnie as the most self-aware people in this movie. Forgive me, Lord, but I'm gonna have to kill that woman, Abilene. Now she gonna put pencil marks on the toilet paper. <laughs> Mm -hmm. But I carry a paper in from my own damn house. That fool don't know. <laughs> it was that double consciousness that Du Bois talks about, right? That they could see themselves and their world and very clearly they could see the white world for what it is and the white women were just you know ditzy and vapid and didn't do anything could not fend for themselves at all and i like that they didn't just run to skeeter as a savior they were suspicious of her they were uneasy they didn't just welcome her in particularly many Maybe things can change. What law's gonna say you got to be nice to your maid? You don't have to do this now, Minnie. You damn right I don't. You two give me heart palpitations. I saw people critique how cartoonishly the racism in this film was depicted, but I actually liked that the central tension in this movie is around bathrooms because it highlights how absurd segregation was, how absurd racism is. You don't want to share a bathroom with people who are cooking your food, who are taking care of your kids. Like, that's ridiculous. And just what are you doing? Get off my toilet! there's this book by Gunnar Myrtle he's a really famous social scientist it's called American Dilemma and he talks about segregation really being about fear of miscegenation a fear of sex you know and there's like certain kinds of intimacy during segregation that people were just so scared of and so afraid of but other kinds of intimacy were perfectly normal and in fact white society could not exist. Literally, it would crumble without certain forms of intimate contact with black folks. It's interesting. I don't know, I'm fascinated by that. And you know, the acting in this movie was just good. They hired the right people. I liked who I was supposed to like. I didn't like who I wasn't supposed to like. I just, I got invested in the narrative. After this movie was finished, I thought, huh, they did exactly what they were supposed to do. They did what they set out to do. I absolutely believe that the director, Tate Taylor, made the film that he wanted to make. And I believe that this is the film that Katherine Stockett, the author of The Help, wanted. And that is good in a technical sense, but really bad when you take a step back. I had much bigger issues with Green Book as a film than I did with The Help as a film because Green Book begins and ends with Abilene. We hear her thoughts and we hear her voice and we also hear more from the maids throughout this film. Green Book is a movie about a white man. <laughs> 
different you know what I'm saying at least in the help the white women and the black women are on equal footing most of the time Green Book is a movie about a white man that tries to pretend like it's about a black man that's some problem. Now, as much as I appreciate this movie beginning and ending with Abilene, once I took a step back and did some research on this book and how it was made and the author's point of view, I thought, oh, well maybe we didn't really, we didn't really hear from the help in this book. We didn't. And that's really why it's not, it's not a good movie. The Help is a movie that is very structurally sound, but thematically and in its storytelling, it is piss poor. It's really, really bad because we cannot trust Catherine Stockett as a storyteller. That's usually what it comes down to when we're talking about movies about black life that are made by white folks. Can I trust you? The Help is complete fiction, like a total fabrication. And I was kind of appalled by that after watching interviews with Catherine Stockett. She said that she had this maid or domestic or cook or whatever you want to call her named Dimitri. And she was so close to Dimitri. Dimitri worked in her family for 50 years. And Catherine Stockett was so close to Dimitri. But she realized that she didn't know anything about Dimitri's life. So she wrote a fictional novel to explore it? That doesn't make sense. <laughs> Catherine, what? Catherine says Dimitri worked with her family or for her family is probably more accurate to say for 50 years. And in those 50 years, she developed no intimate relationship with her. She says that she only saw Dimitri outside of her white maid's uniform for the first time at her funeral. Yet she had such deep care and affection for this woman. Something is wrong there. Catherine, who was only like 40 or 41 at the time that the book was published, that means that she was not alive and kicking in the 60s. That means this is a real fictionalized account. Didn't really indicate that she'd done any research to write this book. No interviews, no archival work, no talking to scholars. She just made it up. That's troubling to me. So you decided to write a story to amplify the voices of the black domestic workers of your childhood without actually talking to those domestic workers? Now, that's just hubris. I mean, that is just straight up arrogance to me. But then there's another layer because one of the three protagonists in The Help is named Abilene Clark. But it turns out that Catherine's brother had a maid named Abilene Cooper. And Abilene Cooper sued Catherine for using her likeness and her name without her permission. Not only did Catherine use Abilene's name, but the real Abilene had a son who died before she started working for the Stockets. It's just unethical. So after watching and reading all of these interviews with Catherine Stockett, I've kind of come to the conclusion that her writing this book over several years was the way that she processed all the guilt she felt about not recognizing that this lifestyle is wrong until she was in her 30s. She said her early to mid 30s is when she recognized something wasn't right. But is this the best way to process that guilt? Now we have this wildly successful book written by a white woman about black women's lives that also centers a white woman that's kind of in, in Catherine's own image. And the book is already bad. It's already bad, but the film exacerbates the flaws of the book. So I haven't really described what the hell the, the movie slash book is actually about. It's about Skeeter who graduates from Ole Miss and goes back to her home in Jackson, Mississippi, where she decides that she wants to be a writer. She gets a really crappy job at the local newspaper and she's reintegrated into this society that she grew up in with basically spoiled brat white debutante. She doesn't fit in anymore. She's the progressive one. She's the liberal one. And she recognizes that the way that her old friends treat their domestic help, their domestic workers is horrible. Skeeter decides that she is going to be on the side of righteousness. She is going to work with the maids to tell their story. So Skeeter, with the help of Abilene and Minnie, publishes an anonymous book about the horrors of being a domestic worker in Jackson, Mississippi. It becomes a bestseller 
and it's happily ever after. I mean, that's basically it. A Bleem played by Viola Davis and Minnie played by Octavia Spencer are great. They are wonderful in this film. But this is also a film very much about Skeeter who's played by Emma Stone. Emma Stone, Skeeter, is the one who is curating these women's voices. It does not happen without Skeeter. There's no real reason for this book to be written in this way. Black American history is American history. As a kid who has loved history for all my life, I have always been expected to be able to see my life in George Washington crossing the Delaware. But we have to have movies and books like The Help because white people literally cannot see themselves in black people. They literally cannot empathize with black folks. So they have to artificially insert themselves into black narratives. There's no real reason why you would make a book about black women questioning inequality in the South, black women fighting for their civil rights, and have a white woman in there doing the same amount of work or more work than the black women. That does not, it's not the truth. It's a, that's a lie, that's a lie. There are just so many layers of foolishness in this film. And one of them is at the very beginning before we really get into the real action of the movie. And it is Skeeter becomes a, a columnist at the local newspaper and she gets a cleaning column and she decides that in order to complete her cleaning column, she is going to mine Abeline's ideas. She's, she's going to take ideas from Abeline for her cleaning column and pass them off as her own so that she can boost her own career in journalism. And that's not even presented as a problem in this movie. The fact that Skeeter is stealing from Abilene is never rectified in the film. At least in the book, Abilene gets the job at the newspaper and Skeeter goes off and becomes, you know, a best-selling journalist or whatever. In the movie, it's just, we just shrug it off. We never talk about it. And back to white women and black women being placed on equal plane. So this is very much an all lives matter movie. Like we all have to hold hands and come together, but that's not real. That's not historically accurate. When we pretend like the work and the stakes of black women and white women during this time period were the same, we ignore that the risks for black women questioning the system at this time were astronomical. Skeeter risked losing her friends. She lost her boyfriend. She got into fights with her parents and her family or whatever. But the black women who were fighting back were literally risking their lives. And we never in this film get an accurate feel for what the stakes are. The movie is so sunny and so bright and so vibrant that we don't ever really get to internalize the darkness of all this. Like when Minnie goes to Hilly's house and she feeds her the shit pie. Minnie feeds Hilly the shit pie and it's funny and Hilly gets sick and she runs away and the sissy space it character who is Hilly's mom says, run away, Minnie, run away. And I'm like, for her life right now. Yeah, you know, like that scene is played for laughs and it's lighthearted and whatever, but then you realize what the real stakes are. I mean, if this is like a real, if this were a real incident, many would be risking literally being strung up. We don't, we don't feel that in this movie. And I think that tension is very important. I don't even really think we feel the stakes after Hilly's new maid gets arrested and we kind of see a little bit of police brutality but it's not on screen. I mean like it's not a fun light thing, you know? It is disorienting to go from like lighthearted romp to these very serious and potentially lethal situations. And then we get to the very end of the movie when we see Skeeter has risked relatively little. I mean, she don't have a man. She fell out with her friends, but ultimately she gets everything she wanted in life. She gets to be a writer. She gets to be a best-selling author. But what did the women get? What did Abeline and Minnie get? Did they get to ride off in the sunset and get everything that they want out of life? No. The end of this movie is Abeline quitting her job and kind of telling off her former employer, but then she just kind of walks down a Jackson, Mississippi street. In reality, like if we're being honest about what the trajectory of what her life was probably like, 
it was not a crystal stare. I don't know, to gloss over that, a little bit irresponsible, you know, because these women are still left in segregated Mississippi, and not one of them doesn't have a job. I think one thing that the book does do better than the film is the book does actually talk more about the violence that accompanies violating these boundaries. In the book, a woman is actually blinded for accidentally using the wrong bathroom. And you know what, maybe the moral of this story is we shouldn't make fictional PG or maybe this is a PG-13 movie about segregation. Maybe maybe we don't need to do that because a lot of people are actually getting their historical knowledge from films. If you are a white person watching The Help, this history is presented to you in a way that makes you feel like you're Skeeter. Thankfully, we live in a time where historians have dedicated lots of resources to studying the lives and the political work and activism of domestic workers. So we don't just have to make it up. What would have really made the storytelling of this movie good is if the filmmaker or Catherine Stockett really reckoned with the sentimentality. So much of this story is about Skeeter's love for Constantine. And of course, Constantine is Dimitri in Catherine Stockett's real life. But in the movie, Constantine is still painted as a magical negress. I mean, there is a scene in there where Constantine is basically like Tinkerbell, like, clap, you can do it, you can do it, Skeeter. And it's like, come on now, come on now. Let's really think about what Constantine is in your life, who she is to you, what she does for you, and how little you give back to her. In Skeeter's mind, there's this real deep love and affection between her and Constantine, but that is something that we really need to interrogate because real love fundamentally is about reciprocity. It's about mutuality. So we see what Constantine has given to Skeeter over all these years, that Skeeter is basically a mess without Constantine. But we never got a feel for what Skeeter or her family gave back to Constantine. The help does allow Skeeter to avoid the fact that she and her family have been exploiting this woman for 30 years and then they threw her out over something relatively minor. That is what we need to interrogate, okay? So the help does what all white savior movies do, which is have the, the white savior role always pointing the finger out, right? I'm the good racist, you're the bad racist. But the good racists need to be taken down too. Oh, I forgot to mention that Catherine Stockett and the director of this film, Tate Taylor, were childhood friends. They grew up together in Jackson, Mississippi. So they're both coming from this very narrow idea of what life was like as a white person and as a black person. Like, it's just too myopic. And when I really thought about this movie and what I really liked about it, what really drew me in is the brilliance of Octavia Spencer and Viola Davis. If this movie does any work to chip away at that mammy ideal, that is completely fictional by the way, it's because those women are so good and so brilliant and they brought so much life and fullness to these roles. And you know, Octavia Spencer won an Oscar for this role. So of course, for the longest time, I've never heard Octavia Spencer say anything bad about the help, but last year for the first time, Viola Davis came out and said that she is not proud of this movie because it is not coming from the point of view of the help. You know, we had this with Green Book too. You're trying to pass pass this off as something that it's not. This is a movie about a white girl and about a white woman's voice and her experience and her understanding of race in Jackson, Mississippi in the 60s. It is not a movie about the experiences of black women domestic workers in the 60s. That's a completely different movie. And that's all I have to say about that. I enjoyed this film much more than I thought I would, but ultimately it is another poorly researched white savior film that is rescued by the brilliance of the black actors in it. <laughs> if I didn't have the critical eye that I do, if I didn't love to do research as much as I do, I would have loved this movie a lot, a lot more because I did like it when I first saw it. I did. I did like it a lot when I first saw it, but then, you know, you unwrap the gift and, you know, it's a piece of coal inside, ultimately. But, like I said, this is a better film to me than Green Book. I think it got closer to its intended goal than Green Book did. But, you know, neither of them are accurate depictions of black history, which 
is a real issue. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate you. Of course, I made a companion video up on Patreon right now. And of course, there's a companion video up on Patreon but right now. It answers the questions the if I trust white women old, and if I think I could be friends women. with white women. So obviously, that's patrons only. Head over in there marriage, to check that out. Send me an like email. Leave a comment. Too. Sign up for the email newsletter. Buy some merch. I appreciate you. Thank you. Bye. Have a good day. Ha <laughs>